everybody and welcome back to your lunch break live today is monday august the first my name is ivana hering if you are new here and if you're not thank you so much for coming back today i am joined by our ala.com business reporter bill thornton and bill is here today to talk about a story that really raised some eyebrows last week and is continuing to get attention this week and that is reports of child labor at a manufacturer in alabama that supplies parts for a hyundai plant now there has been a class action Action lawsuit filed in this case. Bill, there's a lot to say here about what is going on. And again, this has been something that people have been talking about ever since an international outlet reported it last week. So what can you tell us about these allegations? Well, first of all, the um, the story really started uh, about almost two weeks ago when Reuters uh, reported that uh, there was a supplier named Smart Alabama that supplies parts for the Hyundai plant in Montgomery that was using child labor. And according to Reuters, this came to light because of the disappearance of a uh, teenage girl who was later found in Georgia alive. And the police, when they began investigating her disappearance, uh, found out that she worked at this plant, allegedly, along with <clears throat> several other teenagers who were under 16 and uh, they would have been uh, operating machinery equipment which is you know obviously against the law so reuters reported this and then they found several other people who uh, were not would not identify themselves who said that they had seen children at maybe as young as 12 or 13 who had been working in this plant hyundai has denied this uh the the part subsidiary smart alabama they have denied it as well uh, it's also important to to note that Reuters is the only outlet that has done original reporting on this so far. So everything that has resulted from this has come from their exclusive report. Uh, the lawsuit was filed in California uh, by a Hyundai owner uh, with the idea that uh, I never would have bought this car if I had known that child labor was involved, uh, as has been reported. And it's a class action lawsuit, which would allow anybody who has ever owned a Hyundai to join the class action, saying that, you know, they bought their car under false pretenses or bad advertising or whatever. If you go to the Hyundai website, they have a statement that shows that they do not support child labor, that they adhere to the U.N. conventions on child labor, et cetera. So, uh, you know, this this is obviously a lot more to shake out on this, but uh, that's where that is right now. Well, and we should make an important distinction here that the allegations of this child labor is at the parts supplier, which is actually called Smart Alabama. It is not at the Hyundai facility in Alabama. It's not directly at a facility owned by Hyundai. Is that correct? That's right. Uh, Smart Alabama is located in Luverne, uh, which is you know south of there. But the the um, um, and again, all of these are allegations. Nothing has been proven. The, the U.S. Department of Labor and the Alabama Department of Labor are both doing investigations, as I believe are, as some other agencies are as well. So again, this is something that is affecting Hyundai and is apparently affecting Hyundai drivers, according to this class action lawsuit. Now, it was filed in California. Tell us about that lawsuit and what the impacts it could have on Hyundai and especially, again, this part supplier in Alabama. Well, okay, so a couple of things. First of all, as I mentioned, uh, both the feds and the state level are investigating this these allegations. The most that they could, well, uh, let's just say this is not new. There are allegations of child labor that happen every year in usually in fast food, but in agriculture, a lot of places. And what happens usually is, is that the entity that is accused, if they either uh, it's proven or they plead to it that they pay penalties and fines and, you know, the, the feds work with them. Class action lawsuit, however, you know, you can imagine what that ha means is that uh, if there were potentially some kind of a settlement or whatever, people who had bought a Hyundai would, uh, you know, receive some kind of financial benefit from it. But that would be, you know, years down the line, uh, depending on how the case shakes out. And again, we're still talking about allegations. Well, and this uh, question here, it might be a little bit in the weeds here, but I think it's important, especially for those of our viewers and those of your readers who do drive a Hyundai. And that is, do you have to, again, to join this class action lawsuit, how do you know if your Hyundai had parts that went through this smart Alabama facility? If this class action lawsuit is open to anybody, isn't there a little bit of a hole there? 
Well, okay, so so the Hyundai plant in Montgomery uh, manufactures uh, uh, the Elantra, the Sonata, uh, the Santa Fe, um, and uh, uh, I'm trying to remember. I think there's two other models that they that they do. Anyway, uh, if and and the Hyundai plant in Montgomery is the sole Hyundai manufacturer for the United States. So. If you bought a Hyundai in the United States that was manufactured in Montgomery, you conceivably would be part of this class action. But, um, you know, this lawsuit was filed, uh, I think it was on Thursday of last week. So there's probably a lot more coming as far as, um, you know, whether, first of all, whether this um, goes any further or, you know, uh, uh, whether there's anything to expect as far as um, who wants to join. Well, and Bill, I know that you said there have been investigations that have been uh, opened or referred to the Alabama Department of Labor, other Alabama officials. But what are Alabama officials saying about these allegations and what are officials in the city of Laverne saying as well? Nobody's saying anything, obviously, because there are investigations going. Um, I can tell you that, you know, the, the, the issue of child labor has become more of a... Um, it's become more of an issue since the pandemic started. Uh, if let's just say, you know, we're, we're talking about uh, if um, you have a situation where employers are finding a hard time keeping positions uh, where people, you know, the great resignation is what we've been talking about for the last year or so, where you have scores of people who leave one sector to go to another sector, presumably for better money, better benefits, all that sort of thing. Well, there was a fear before the pandemic that uh, more companies were beginning to slide underage workers in to fill gaps. Now, when you have uh, people who don't want to uh, get out of their homes because of COVID two years ago, the idea would have been that the temptation would have been much greater to slide uh, underage workers in. And, uh, you know, not just the fact that the kids aren't going to school, but it's also being involved in things, heavy equipment, long hours, uh, um, you know, all kinds of things. And, and also, you know, involved in this, too, is, you know, the global issue of child trafficking. How are they getting kids in? How are they, you know, where do they what kind of living conditions are they in uh, diet, education, all that sort of thing. So there's is more than just this issue. In Alabama, this is something that uh, the feds are paying attention to uh, throughout the country. And also, it's a global issue. The UN has issued several things over the last two or three years about the rise in global uh, child trafficking and uh, child labor. Uh, I believe the last year, the UN estimated there was something on the order of uh, 160 million children around the world who were uh, involved in child labor. Most of that is in agriculture and most of it is in Asia, if I remember right. But but it's, a, it's an issue that um, many people are paying attention to uh, as a result of the pandemic. Well, and I have right here in front of me, the Alabama child labor law prevents minors under the age of 16 from working in a manufacturing environment. So I know, again, that Reuters has been the one doing the original reporting on this story. And you mentioned that a few minutes ago. But according to Reuters, how young were some of these people who have claimed to work at this plant or who others have claimed to have seen at the plant? Uh, 12 to 13. Um, uh, one of the statements that I've heard is um, that... Um, you know, at this at a particular plant, uh, you might see somebody who is in a um, logo shirt, you know, uh, of a worker that has a COVID mask on, so you can't see their features, uh, you know, and and uh, they would all be concentrated in a certain shift uh, with with supervision, but um, but you know, uh, you can imagine when you're working around heavy equipment, metal stamping, cutting things like that. Uh, things could go south really fast if, you know, there's there's not a lot of, uh, well, I mean, even if there was a lot of supervision, you're still talking about um, people who, you know, technically a 12 year old, you know, it's not even a teenager yet. So you can you can do the math yourself as to where the danger is. What is what's next for this investigation? What's next for this story, Bill? OK, so uh, the department, the Alabama Department of Labor, uh, said that they were investigating. And one of the things they mentioned was that according to uh, uh, the state law regarding child labor, 
if you can prove that the child was in the plant, then you basically have a case because, um, you know, if the child is in a place that they're not supposed to be, you assume that they're there because they're working. Um, that's a rough explanation of it, but it, it sounds like, you know, if they can prove that it's a pretty airtight case in terms of on the state level, the feds are probably going to go about it in a different way because of federal statutes. But, um, you know, uh, uh, at this point, uh, as I said, the only original reporting that's been done about this has been through Reuters. So we, you know, uh, with any other story of this nature, usually it's the stories that come afterwards. If this loosens other people's recollections or whatever, people go on the record, then there could be more to this story. We just don't simply know. You know it, there, it has not advanced much further than that original report in terms of, uh, you know, finding out more information. And again, we know that according to the state law, I'm going to read it again just to make sure I get it right. The Alabama child labor law prevents minors under the age of of 16, excuse me, from working in a manufacturing environment. Is that the same federally, Bill? Yeah, I believe so. I don't know that for certain, but I believe so. You know, uh, state law can't supersede federal law anyway. So um, um, if you recall, the reason that we have child labor laws anyway is because of, uh, you know, conditions at the beginning of the 20th century where you would have families who would, um, you know, have a lot of children, would send their children to very, you know, dangerous jobs like mining or uh, textile work or whatever. And, uh, you know, uh, you would have uh, industrial accidents and then uh, fires in places where, you know, children would die as a result of this. And, uh, you know, there were some very stringent federal laws that were passed as a result of these reports. And then um, uh, child labor had started to not be as big an issue about 20 years ago. And then it began to tick up back up after a while. Um, and I'm not really sure exactly why uh, the reasons for that uh, in you know, according to the experts, but it has been something that was on their radar, like I said, prior to the pandemic. And now there the fears are that it has kind of grown exponentially. There's a lot to unpack here, Bill. I know you're going to continue to try to dig into this, do some more, again, original reporting and to follow this class action lawsuit out of California and to see if that will grow. And especially if there are any people who are directly claiming, uh, again, that they have a car from Alabama that they wouldn't have bought if they knew child labor was involved. Bill, thank you so much for your reporting here. Everybody watching, thank you so much. And we'll see you tomorrow.